Hello friends, welcome to this um, Top Tips Day and uh, a warm welcome to Sam Flynn, who I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know whether a lot of you know about Sam Flynn, but she's an amazing social media trainer um, who's had loads of experience, haven't you Sam? <laughs> well yeah, 11 and a half years now I've been wrapped up in the world of social media training, so yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, what we're going to talk about today is mobile phone usage, um, because I realised that I was like scrolling, 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 and I have to, for my business, um, post things like most business owners do, um, especially since, um, <laughs> since this, you know, the pandemic thing. But what we need to do is actually learn how to limit it, and that is so hard when you are used to using it all the time. And so many people are, aren't they? I mean, there must be thousands and thousands of people online all the time. Yeah. Um, and it's disturbing. It's disturbing mental health. So tell me what the what um, how it affects mental health, Sam, please. Well, there's I mean, there's lots and lots of different ways it affects mental health, really. But probably firstly, if we look at the time issue. So the average UK iPhone user spends four hours a day on their phone. Now, obviously, that's the average. So some people might be an hour, but it also means some people might be 12 hours, 13 hours plus a day um, on their phone. So that's the first issue, really, is it's taking our time away from things that fill up our cup and that bring joy to our life. Um, and I think that's the same with so many addictions, isn't it, is that we're drawn to something that actually isn't really giving us much fulfillment in life. Um, of course, there are those little moments where there's a funny TikTok video that makes us giggle or, you know, whatever it or a nice message we've received from someone. But really, for four hours a day, it's not giving us the joy that so many other activities could be giving us. So it's taking us away from that, that fulfillment um and I certainly know when I was probably at the height of my addiction a couple of years ago during the pandemic that I would finish a day feeling flat and unaccomplished because it became the procrastination tool it became the thing I was drawn to to escape but actually that escape escapism meant all the things I wanted to do weren't getting done and I think that in itself can really leave you feeling low and then it's what we're seeing on our phones as well you know, if you're spending hours and hours scrolling, particularly on social media every day, then unfortunately, the, the way the algorithms work is they do tend to deliver things that might make us feel negative or angry. They might leave us feeling like we um, are, you know, not worthy or the lower self-esteem, like all these people are doing these wonderful things. And what about me? I'm not doing that or or, you know, in, in, in the sense of a business owner, it might be all these people are having this amazing business success and, and I'm not, when we all know that, you know, we can all go and say what we want on social media, it doesn't actually have to be true. Um, so that is a huge factor as well, that kind of imposter syndrome and feeling like everyone's doing bigger and better things than we are. And the more you kind of get caught in that infinite scroll of looking through that, I think the more you end up on that slippery slope to just that lower self-esteem and those feelings of worthlessness. Yeah, I, I, everything. I totally relate to this, everything. Because um, um, I think mostly I go to it, it for um, connection, for social yeah. connection, you know, for input on things or, um, yeah, for a dopamine hit, isn't it, really? It is, yeah. I mean, that's the reason and, we're all addicted to our phones is the, the and, dopamine hit we get from them. And the more, um, and you get a dopamine hit and then you want more and more and more of it. So you're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, hopefully it's not like that in certain <laughs> Facebook groups like mine, but, you know, it's, um, it, it is it is possible that you join all these groups, don't you? Um, and if you want to kind of connect with people because of business they say oh yeah 15 minutes before 15 and then you do your post and then 15 minutes after that, that's half an hour and you haven't even had your social time <laughs> um, so yeah so really social co connection um and things like that I, I totally relate to um, yeah I mean there's the positive side of course as well that connection's a good thing 
for mental health, particularly, for instance, if you live alone or you work on your own, like so many of the small business owners do, that connection is really useful a lot of the time as well. So don't get me wrong, I'm not an anti-phone person at all or anti-social media. Of course, I think they're both wonderful, but it's about using them in a mindful way and in a... Um, a time economical way to make sure we're not just sucked into spending all day every day on there fab so um you're you're running courses on limiting <laughs> mobile phone use even though you're a social media trainer so yeah. tell, tell me how you went into that i mean it's just kind of it's a bit of a paradox isn't it yeah, yeah. Paradox. um it's something i've probably been thinking about for several years and I think it's got even worse over the years with the algorithm changes on social media. And it's kind of like you said, all the advice is things like, you know, engage with people for 30 minutes before you post and 30 minutes after you post. And then you're thinking, but you're really asking people here to not only come up with amazing content, but then they've got to spend all this time post, you know, engaging with people for the sake of engaging to tick a box and spending ages scrolling to find people to engage with. And it just you know, it really starts to click with me that this isn't an effective way to win business. You know, there's got to be a better way than spending hours on social media. So it's something I've always been really focused on in the training I do is how can you limit your time but maximize your results using social media and acknowledging that there are lots of other marketing methods out there as well. But I think the, the main reason I sort of made this shift is during the pandemic, when I was stuck at home with my three daughters my husband was out working all day, trying to run a business. And I couldn't use, I couldn't work on a computer because my youngest was 17 months and she'd just bash the keys if she, you know, if I had my computer around. So I realized my phone became my main business tool. And I was doing so much work, replying to emails, writing posts, editing videos, everything was happening on my phone. That My phone felt like it was permanently in my hand. And I think that really started to heighten my addiction to it. And it was when my middle daughter, who would have been five at the time, um, she's just turned seven. So she must have been five, nearly six at the time, said to me, mom, you're always on your phone. You're, you're not listening to me. You're on your phone. That it was like a dagger to the heart of like, oh, my gosh, she's right. You know what it looks like to them as non phone users is I'm giving all my attention to this thing. It's easy for me to say, yes, but I'm working. But to them, it just looks like I'm giving all my attention to this piece of technology and not to them. And from that moment, I dramatically reduced my screen time. I took actions to make sure that, you know, I was keeping my phone out of reach. It wasn't next to me all the time and, and so on. And, um, you know, I really reduced my screen time down. And then I started researching it and reading books about why we're addicted and the impact it's having on our society and um, the impact it's having on us as individuals and it just be has become a passion for me really um, and even though it sounds like it's the polar opposite to social media training I think actually they kind of go nicely together to help people understand that yes social media is a great marketing tool but no you don't need to be on there for hours and hours every day in order for it to be a great marketing tool. Yeah I think you're right I am kind of limiting and trying to get organized slowly but surely <laughs> into planning content and i think that is the thing is to plan content ahead um, if you are a, if you are a business owner which um yeah some, definitely some some aren't. yeah so i actually did go on this first course um did my <laughs> one of my guinea pigs yes and I, I and i managed to attend i made a point of attending live every session yeah. because you know, you buy these courses and um, you have the option of um, uh, of attending live or not. And I was like, right, this one I am going to attend live because I'm passionate about trying to limit, mostly because my hands were hurting from holding it. You know, I've got sore things it is, RSI. whatever it is, arthritis or whatever. So, yeah, so it's literally you know your wrists can hurt your hands ache your RSI or whatever yeah so so that's why I really was passionate about attending live and I loved the like the little nuggets that came out of it like oh, making a home for it so yeah so I have a little stand on my windowsill or or next to my printer or something where I know that it is that's where it lives um, it's <laughs> The, these this security thing isn't so hot though you know with 
the is it pd2 or something it's called so the security goes to your phone gets code and then comes back again so oh, yeah. you can end up actually moving more I know. it's not a bad thing <laughs> no get your steps up yeah that's it you know it's limiting laziness isn't it having to actually move to your phone rather than it following you know you round <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, so I, I've found lots of nuggets and I keep I keep thinking about them. So it's been really, really helpful. Um, so you're doing a shorter version of the one that I did, aren't you, Sam? Yes. So I already have out there one for business owners, which is called Use Your Phone Less for Business Success, which is, I mean, to be honest, the content is applicable to everyone. But I particularly talk about how, you know, it's taking time away from your business impacting your mental health is going to have a negative impact on your business too and all the other factors like focus and attention and what it's what our phones are doing to our brains and limiting our ability to focus and then steps to reduce your phone use so yeah that is an that is in existence at the moment a short course that includes both a video and an ebook version and then in within the next month i'm going to be creating one that is really just applicable to any phone user anyone who wants to reduce their screen time and give themselves the motivation to do so because I think the important thing with these courses is I don't just tell people how to reduce their phone use but why um, and I think that's important to understand the the why bit first to to kind of get that motivation to go actually this is negatively impacting my life and now I need to change so that's sort of how the courses will be that's how the the upcoming course will be split into okay why do you need to do it and here's how you can do it so that is in production within the next kind of month so yeah if you're interested in getting your hands on it then do either direct message me or send me an email sam at samflin.co.uk and i will let you know as soon as it is live and ready to purchase fabulous i'm, I'm really excited about this in fact um you know when i was doing the course i was in oxfam in chorlton um and I was I was on the phone and, and I looked at my screen. Uh, I've got a screen um, saver, which says, why am I picking up my phone? Right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and I showed it to the guy on the till. I said, you know, look at this. And, yeah. and then the guy at the back of me said, oh, that's really interesting. That's a good idea. And I said, well, I'm on this course. <laughs> And he said, I need this. <laughs> I'm yeah. going on it too much. And that was just a random stranger who. And I, I think I think everyone relates, don't they? I think, you know, whenever I've spoken to anyone about this, they all say the same thing. Yeah, I use my phone too much. And that's the reality of the um, the apps and what they've created. And, you know, it's not really our fault. All of the apps have been designed to be addictive. And as such, we are constantly reaching for our phone and looking for our phone and wondering where our phone is. Because our brain, as you say, is always after that next dopamine hit of like, oh, if I pick up my phone, I'll get that little rush of pleasure. But it just doesn't last. And then we go again and again and again. And it doesn't leave us feeling happy, you know, any sort of level of happiness after, I don't think. So no. it is really important. And, and interestingly, when I scroll through um, social media or on Facebook on my desktop, it does not have the same effect. You are not scrolling, scrolling like you are on, on a mobile phone. It is, isn't it? It's yeah. incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. So, so that is, you know, that that's another thing that you can do instead is have your little hit up on, on your laptop or. Yeah. Um, the great thing about using it on desktop is it doesn't go with you, doesn't it? You know, it doesn't leave the house with you. You're not getting it out in a waiting room or the playground while your kids are playing or, um, you know, even in the car, as you see many people shockingly do as they're driving. You know, you can't do that with your computer. And I think that's another issue with the mobile phone, really, is that it's so mobile that we always have this addictive thing in our pockets or our handbags or wherever we keep it. So that mobile nature is a downside to it in a way. It is, yeah. I mean, um, but aren't they coming back like the the normal touchpad yeah. ones? You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, there's a lot of teenagers now who only get the ones that you can just text and call on, and that's it. They're getting quite popular, right? Yeah, because I am I'm sorely tempted. In fact, I'm sorely tempted to get my sat nav out of the loft and put install it into the car, so I don't have to have that phone on there. Um, yeah. It's all these little things that you think, 
oh that could happen and then um, and you know using get as an, an alarm what, what's wrong with having the digital alarm clock <laughs> i think this is the problem i mean and there's so many excuses isn't there yeah but i use my phone for this well you can actually get one of them for three quid or you know like you say oh well, i use it for google maps yeah but you've probably got a sat nav somewhere like you say in the loft or even if you don't some you know some sat navs now are really low cost and you know, remember the old days of printing out a map um, or even getting out an A to Z. You know, there's always a solution, isn't there? That we've just, our phones have made our lives so easy, which has been great in some respects, but in other respects, they've made it too easy that we've become so reliant on them that they're always with us. Yeah, and that's it. So what's your phone usage now, Sam? <laughs> um, well, it, diff it depends really what I've got going on and what I'm up to. And to be fair, sometimes I do watch series on my phone. If my husband's watching something on the telly that I'm not interested in, I'll often do some cooking and put something on my phone. So it does, it does kind of change week by week. But typically, I'm usually around the two hour a, a day mark on average, which is a vast difference to, I mean, I was definitely up around the six hour mark at the height of the pandemic. So yeah, some, some day, some weeks it can be as low as under an hour a, a week, av uh, sorry, an hour a day average, but right now I'm around the two hour a day mark, um, which really is still, you know, even if you think about that, sometimes it's like, wow, that's still relatively high, but it's half the average of a typical user. Um, and as I always say to people, because some people now have said to me, oh gosh, I can't look at my phone because Sam's here. It's not about never using it. It's just about being more mindful when you do and making sure you're not caught in that endless scroll. Yeah. And, and there are so many easy top tips for reducing the temptation. There is. Um, yeah. There really are. So, I mean, I am still, my Facebook ticks along because I don't log out of it. So I'm still on eight hours, but I reduced it from 11. So yeah, I'm going the yeah. right way. <laughs> I mean, you know, as I say, it's not it's about going the through. So it's hard yeah. to. Yeah, because it's not yeah. about going from 11 hours down to one hour a day straight off, you know. And I think the key with anything like this is to gradually do step by step, you know, and and kind of go and go going from 11 hours to eight hours is amazing. That's three hours less a day. You know, that's huge. But then, you know, in a month or so time, you might be thinking, actually, maybe I could reduce that down to six hours. You know, let, let's take the next step. Whereas, you know, it's it's scary thinking, well, let's go from 11 hours a day to one hour a day. It's it's a huge leap. It's a huge, complete shift in your mm -hmm. actions and what you're doing. So I think any reduction is a should be celebrated and notified that you've got those three hours back for you every day. Yeah, I'm, th I'm kind of thinking it's a bit like Weight Watchers, right? So you don't kind of starve yourself. Yeah, you just kind of limit your treats. And then every so often, use completely. You'll be there scrolling like <laughs> frantically after a few days. So yeah, it's just every that so little. You're allowed to binge, aren't you? Is that yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I set a bit of time aside every day. Pretty much when I have my lunch, I'll be like, right, I'm just going to go on social media and have a scroll for 20 minutes, and I allow myself to do it but I'm not, it's in that knowledge that I'm doing it. And then once I've done it, I'm going, right, that's me done for the day. I'm not, I don't need to go on social media now. I've had my little catch up. I've had my little scroll through. I've engaged with a few people, but I don't need to be doing that every hour on the hour, you know? And it's, so it's allowing yourself that time um, and acknowledging that, okay, it is part of my business and part of my life and I will be using it, but I'm not letting it control me. I'm in control of it. And that, that shift makes a massive difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what what's next? I mean, what can what can you do next after doing these little uh, what half hour courses are they? Yeah, they're just half hour. So they're really just an introduction to help people understand the why they need to change and how they can start to change. Um, but the next step for it will be in a few months' time, I'll be back running a program similar to you came along to, which is the live sessions where it's much more interactive. We can chat through any issues you're having. And I think that's the important thing is it's quite easy to buy a, a course that you watch on your own, less easy to take action. Whereas when there's other people there helping you along the way, helping you with problems you have in reducing your use, um, then it is much more actionable. So there'll be more programs in uh, down the line where I will be um, helping you live. And we'll do that over several weeks and, the promise on that is if you don't 
reduce your phone use by at least 25% by the end of the programme that you get your money back. So it really is designed to help you reduce your phone use. Um, and I'm also looking at working in businesses as well and working with teams um, and helping them reduce their phone use. Because of course, with a lot of home working and then people going back into the offices, you know, the downside of home working is that people can spend so long on their phones and, and so helping um, organisations and teams within organisations reduce their phone use as well. Mm, procrastination, hey? <laughs> yeah, looking for that procrastination too long. <laughs> Putting off the inevitable, so so yeah. This um, I'm very excited about this. Um, I have to say, Sam, I, I've I've been learning as like you throughout the pandemic all about this from different people, and like yeah, this this, is, this needs to be told to, and shared. So that's that's why I invited you on today because I think it's so, so, so important. And uh, hopefully we won't need uh, extra, you know, pairs of glasses and yeah. things, wrist supports and all this kind of thing, necks, massages yeah. and all this kind of thing. All this relates as well to um, on our bodies, wear and tear. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's make the shift happen and get so, people living more fulfilled lives. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our laughter exercise, Sam, is like scrolling the mobile phone. <laughs> So shall we do this one? Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna throw it. We're gonna throw it away. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I have actually done that before. <laughs> Okay. Oh, thank you very much for um, sharing your knowledge and time with us. Um, and I will share you your uh, link as well for Great. for your email address so Perfect. hopefully thank people are interested to get in touch thank, thank you very you. much have a great day have a great bye. day everyone bye for now bye bye, bye.